Hello, welcome to Ghost Prime Transformers Reviews. I'm Ghost Prime, and this video will be taking a look at MP51 RC. Now, RC first appeared in 1986 in the Transformers The Movie, and she appeared during the attack on Autobot Base and was a constant character throughout the movie and the subsequent seasons of Transformers Generation 1. Now, she never had a Generation 1 toy. There was one proposed, but it never came to fruition. There was also an Action Master proposed, but again, never came to fruition. So she's one of those characters that's been very hard to make a good representation of, usually taking sacrifices in other areas of the figure designed to accommodate a transformation or something else. This is not an exception to that. So without any further ado, let's get to the review. All right, and here we are with the box. It comes with a normal masterpiece style box. It has long life design on it, which is newer, I think, since Ultra Magnus that shown. It has MP51, RC, picture of RC here, one of her blast effects, running or something, and her alt mode. And it's okay. Um, it's a decent picture. Now the box, you can kind of see the lines in it and that this is uh, shinier like the other masterpieces. But I don't think it's done. It just doesn't feel as nice. Something with the quality has changed. The top is Foil Transformers Masterpiece with MP51 RC. On the side, you have RC kind of laying down in a weird pose. And the car mode on the other side. On the back, you have a ton of images. So on the back, you have car mode. You have some different accessory pictures. Like you could put this little spike piece here. Shows the interior of the cockpit, which is nice and detailed. Different poses. Uh, so what you could do with her head. And different things with her gun here. And then a nice uh, looking group shot right there. And then accessory part list. On the bottom, you just have, actually, I have no idea what this is. I'm guessing legal stuff and, you know, copyright, not copyright, but uh, that kind of stuff. Opening the box, you do get the uh, blister packed RC, or it's a, a clamshell packaging, and you get instruction sheet with a card. I actually have not opened this yet, so let's do that right now. I'll take a look at the card first. Has some um, nicely rendered artwork, which the chest actually looks correct in this artwork. MP51 masterpiece. Let's see if I, my camera just does not want to focus. There we go. Pretty nice artwork. On the back, you have some words and stuff that is not in English and some stats, along with a picture of the figure. I'm gonna focus. Opening up the instruction sheet, you do get a very, very large instruction sheet. It tells you how to do a lot of different things that you could do with her weaponry here, where you could store her weaponry. Let's see if I can even open it up even further. It is very large heavy paper, some images, more things you could do with the weaponry, uh, where the crusher's from, what episode, and then it opens up again. What you get is, I can't even fit it in, in frame. I mean, this is a massive, let me see if I can just move this cam camera up. There we go. Massive instruction sheet. That's fairly clear. So yeah, very large, very clear instructions that have nicely drawn images on how to do everything. And of all the accessories, very nice. Okay. In the packaging here, let's start off some of these little faces. Let me get in, see if I can get the camera on there. So it's kind of like a I don't know what kind of expression you'd call that. Concern, maybe? And you also get a 
not really sure what to call this facial expression. Uh, mouth open happy. And uh, kind of happy, happy face. You do get her standard blaster in pink plastic. And the holster, which actually holds on to her leg, on the side of her leg. And this is the blaster that can fit in here. And it kind of fits in there through fiction, so it's not super loose. All right, moving on, let's go to her car mode. Now, her car mode comes as this nice pink color, which is standard for RC. You can see Autobot logo right there, white and gray. What's also really cool is if I get really close in on there, you can see that the the uh, the dashboard is painted. The gauges are painted behind the steering wheel. It's got nice the gray seats that are painted. Uh, it's very cool looking. Uh, it's definitely nice to have some of that detail. She's got tail lights on the rear. And there's the front without anything on the white, which is very accurate to the cartoon. As far as rolling, if you get everything together, it may kind of roll. Uh, it doesn't really roll on the surface, but you see the underside, it's very difficult to get actually everything under those wheels. I do, but just barely. So it will roll, but not, not super great. Uh, it's a lot like um, a hot rod in that regard. So as you can see, there's these pegs right here on either side. And what you could do is you could stick like one of her weapons here, like this the rifle. Kind of stick that on the side so she could have that driving along. And so let me see if I can just take this out. I've been having trouble. So this crusher piece, actually there's a little tiny hole there on the side. Now it's supposed to go in kind of like this, but I can't get it to stay. Let's see if I can do it on camera. I was not able to do it off camera, so I don't know what makes me think I will be able to do it. Now, ah, there we go. Just put it right in there, and there you have the crusher accessory on the side. Okay, and quickly moving over to the underside, you could take this here standard gun, and there's these two peg holes right here, and you take the pegs on the side, and you just peg that right in. So you could put hold her gun under the front of the car, like so. The instructions also say to put the holster here, but it looks kind of silly because it's just the holster, like that, which looks strange to me. I don't understand why it's there. Unless maybe it's a bag carry stuff there because it doesn't have a trunk. Uh, I don't know. All right, so before we get into transformation, Let's go over a couple comparisons. All right, starting out, we are going to compare it to uh, Daniel that came with the Ultra Magnus character. So you can see how she scales to a real person. So the thing is, this character will not be able to fit in the cockpit with legs. Might be okay if uh, we didn't have legs, but there's definitely no room for legs in the, uh, the cockpit there, which is kind of a shame because it'd be really cool to have um, you know, to have her be able to carry uh, one of these little figures that came with the masterpiece. But the, the scale looks about correct. Now, I don't have Earthrise RC, but I do have Lifeline, which is the same mold. So here's, here's how they compare together. As you can see, this one doesn't look as nice. This one has much nicer lines with these curves as to where this has similar curves, but because it what needs to cover everything under it so much, it actually ends up looking more boxy and bigger and more clunky than this one, where this one actually could kind of pass as a sports car. But they have very similar, let me get closer to the camera here, they have very similar features. So you could actually see some of the detail that are very similar. They both have the same, you know, cockpit area and the little swoopy thing. Of course, this one does have a rear end at all, where this one does. And that's how they look underside. This one has a whole robot under it. Well, this one does too. It's not as completely clear that that's a whole robot. 
Now here, Masterpiece RC is next to Animated RC. This is one of my favorite RC character uh, representations. Completely different car, but I thought it'd be a nice comparison. Now, I think this is the most fair comparison. This is the comparison to the Thrilling 30 RC character uh, characterization. Now, one thing about the transformation to this that I'll get into for just a second is it actually takes a lot from this figure. Usually you see the other way around. You see Masterpiece influencing newer figures where this one and old, this one's influenced by an older figure and that's this one. So if you look under the car of the Thrilling 30, you see the legs are up this way. This is the chest piece right here. And the arms are down from here, right? It's very similar as the legs being up this way, arms from here, of course they're not extended straight, the head's here, and this is also the chest piece. So this one is very, very much influenced by this one. But as you can see how they look, again, very similar in shape. This one looks a little bit more sporty, a little bit more sleek, kind of fast, but it's a stylization on the same mold. This is actually quite accurate to the cartoon. But there's how they compare. All right, now getting into transformation. Now transformation on this is easier than most of the Masterpiece figures, but it is quite fiddly. So please bear with me while I go through it. I'll try to explain my process. So the first thing I do is that, so this is actually pegged into this piece right here on the back. And the first, and, and it's also pegged in here. So the first thing I actually end up doing is breaking these pieces apart. So I end up just kind of going like that, pulling out this way very gently. Like that. So that actually separates this piece. And then you want to take this piece up on either side. Like so. And then this piece here is connected to it. So you could actually just pull that up. Not that I can actually get under here. Let's see. Kind of, kind of clicks under this piece here. Pull that up. And then take these pieces here, move them out. And I always forget which way to do this. Go like, like this. So you're gonna move it out and back. So you have these standing up, kind of like that, right? And then this piece folds here. And there's two hinges here, here and here, and it folds here and under, like so. And then this piece, there's a hinge here and a hinge here, so it just sort of moves out into that position, like that. And you do that on both sides. So you move, move this out under, and then like that. So you want the door here to be under this piece. So you have something that looks like, like this right now. So then what you could actually do is take this whole piece, kind of lift it up. So that would unpeg this peg right here from the peg hole in the back. And then you wanna make sure to take these top of the seats, push them in. And if you can get your finger up in there and kind of just, there we go, flatten them down like that. And that removes those these seat panels here. And it also has these pieces come in a little bit. So you wanna push these pieces in. You can do this now or later. It's, it's so the um, other pieces could fit and slot directly in here. So let's just take this and leave that there for right now. Let me move the gun here. And now what I would like to do is open these. These kind of hinge up or under her feet. Like so. And let's move her arms out of the way. Take her, her legs, move them out like that. Her, her legs have a little automorph feature. So if I get in there, Kind of move it forward. See, so clip forward, take that hip, click it forward, and it fills in that little that little gap right there. So we got this part done right here. And now I want to move her arms out and around. Take her head, swing it up, kind of like that. Just kind of get it out of the way for right now. So we have something like this. And then I'm going to take these pieces here. I'm just going to push these in on the side. Kind of again getting these things out of the way. So another, now what we have to do is take this whole back section here, 
move it back. So you see there's this piece. Now this piece is actually metal too. So what we're gonna wanna do is take this window and get it up into here. So you wanna take it, push it down. Now this is a part that's sort of, it's gonna be hard to get on camera, um, but you gotta wanna turn it a bit so you can kinda finagle it through this piece here, which again, is just difficult to do on camera. Okay, once you have it through here, then you need to get it once again through this, this other piece here. So this one's a little easier. Just kind of turn that, put it through, push it through all the way, push this down, turn the windshield all the way around, and that will, oh, maybe we should have done this later. Take the wheels. This actually sits up right back there, so just like that. Then you can put the wheels down, it goes over it. So we have something that's kind of exploded view right now. You can move this here. You could take this panel here. Move that. Flip the Autobot logo. Move these panels. Good. Put these panels back. Now these are these little hinges that slide, which I'll get to in a minute. They're also in the back. So you got to be careful with those. So make sure you just go ahead and put that there for right now. Now we could actually take your chest. Take this piece, kind of slide it into place. Their chest doesn't lock in place too tightly, but it has these little pegs you can see right there. And then just kind of leave it up like this for them, just a moment. So we're gonna work on this back piece here. So first starting off with this, we're gonna unpeg these taillights from there on either side like this. Be careful doing this because it, it does put some strain on these pieces right here. And then you wanna take this piece and move it up and in like so. Now these pieces are, are sort of fiddly and kind of scary to be honest. So you move them in, they are on this little hinge that has some free, has a little free space here. You can see it on this one. So take it and push on it like that. And it also is longer. So I'm gonna get real close. So you can see it's actually longer than the pin and you wanna take it, pull it out like that. And you wanna do that on both sides. So, and then this is gonna rotate here and here. So you're gonna rotate this in and then trying to clear everything, get it to kind of do that. So you want it to look like that. So it's kind of flush with the side on either side of the figure. So pull that out. Now mine were really tight when I did this the first time and it was kind of scary. So now what we could do is see these little hinges here. We could actually push this up I gotta clear this section here. There, move that like that. There. So then you take these, kind of put them together. So it makes that backpack piece really small in comparison. And these just stay there. So on the underside, you take the, the wheels and push them in like that. Now you have these two pegs and there's actually, if you look under here, there's right up here, there's peg holes. It's very hard to see. I can't even get the camera in there. But what this needs to do is these pieces here need to come up into here. So you're going to push that kind of up. Kind of, kind of like that. Now they don't actually peg in, but it sits like that. And then the top, the top piece kind of pushes down. And what you want is these pieces to go into these slots, which are again, difficult to, to make out. And this could actually kind of go over, so. Okay, so fiddling with the backpack for just a second, you just kind of squeeze these in until they lock and they lock in place super well. Like really, really, really well. I mean, it stays there and these, these pieces kind of fit under it, so it stays just like that. So the back kind of looks like that. So you're all in the position of standing her up. So there, there you have RC in robot mode. Now, a few things in robot mode, of course, there is the, 
the big controversy of the chest. They could have done this chest better. And what it is is because of because of the way this is transforms and it goes fits into this piece and fits into the top piece here. It needs to go here flat. And they could have done it better. They could have I I've already looked at it. There was a way to do it, but also I think it's because maybe kind of a dual thing because I don't know segues into articulation, but her she could go, her arm could go all the way across, which would not be possible if they made her chest the way it should look. I would have preferred the chest the way it should look instead of this way. The sacrifice for articulation doesn't make sense to me. I can understand why they did it, actually handling and holding the figure, but I don't agree with it. Now let's just give her a quick turnaround here. As you can see the side view. Here she is at the back. Side again. But overall, let me if I could get close up. The head sculpt, I know there's been a lot of complaints about this head sculpt. I don't think it's terrible. I think it looks pretty decent. I actually like the way it is. I wish she would have less of a smiling face on every single one of her faces, but I don't think it's all that terrible, uh, personally. Uh, I would like to have seen a more serious face, maybe a in danger face or something uh, besides a smiling or open lips. That would have been preferred, um, you know, as far as I, I think. Now, one of the things she could do, one of the gimmicks is you could open up her, her head here and there's Actually, what you have to take off, take out the face. You can slide out the face. I can't get my finger in there otherwise. And you got to move it. So take out. She has a visor here. And then I don't know if I could get deep in there, but there's two channels. So you can kind of see it there. There's two channels. So you want to move the face actually into the back channel. And then you could put the visor down and get that in focus so you guys could see it would make a lot more sense. And that's what it looks like with the visor down. I think it looks pretty cool. I like the gimmick. I think it's, it's really neat. Uh, articulation. So let's go over quickly articulation. So her arm is on a universal joint. Could go all the way around, all the way up like this, all the way down. She has bicep swivel. She has a double jointed elbow, which is right there. Wrist swivel, wrist out and in. The fingers, I'm just afraid I'm gonna break because they're so tiny and very hard to focus on. So the thumb is on a, a joint there and that could go in and out. Now her fingers here, they're on their own separate two joints. So those three fingers are connected, but the index finger is not. It's on two different separate joints, same joints as these. So you get some good range of motion, some expression with her hands. Uh, she does, like, like I showed earlier, have the clavicle. Uh, so you could actually get some good poses. Her neck is jointed here and there. The head is on a ball joint but she could do 360, kind of inquisitive, down pretty far and up pretty far, which is like a pretty nice range of motion. There are two joints in her waist. Uh, she can go most of the way down. I don't wanna, might be able to go all the way around. I don't really wanna force it. And then there's another joint here. One is loose, one is tight. So it kind of makes it really strange. Now her the, her leg does not go really far back. That's about it, but it goes really far forward and up and around. We're not gonna talk about that. And then her knee, now, I really like her knees. I think her knees are really cool. How it has this whole piece here and kind of fits all the way around. I think that's that's really neat the way they did their knee. And you can let me see if you kind of get it there. Yeah, it goes. Very cool, I, I, I dig that. Uh, her foot could go up this far like this, down pretty far. She has ankle tilt also really far. Toes, 
Um, all together, and these are metal, and all together, it's pretty decent articulation. You can get some damn good poses out of this figure. So, real quick, let's uh, take a look at how you could arm her up. All right, so arming her up, you could take her little gun holster here, and that could fit into a slot right there on her thigh. Like so, take her gun. Peg that in there. Now her gun has these little pegs on it that do peg into her hand, much like any other masterpiece. You see there's the slot right there. You could take her rifle, which there's these slots right here, the same ones you use to put it on a car. And this could go in there like like so. Just so hold her rifle like this. And she has this little gun. You can actually conceal it. There is a channel. I can get that in focus. Which I'm having not trouble a lot today. Right up in there. I can't get the light in there. But there's a channel right, right there. That this little tiny gun would just slot into. which my big ass fingers can't seem to do. Use your imagination on that one. So before we move on, why don't we look at some comparisons? All right, for some robot mode comparisons, here she is with Lifeline, which is the same mold as the RC again. And as you can tell, the chest is different. This is how they, it should look and that's, of course, how this one looks. And kind of wish they would have done a little better. But you can, and you can really tell on the side. But that's how they compare to the Earthrise. Now, this one is the Thrilling 30. Let me go a little closer here, because I do want to actually get a... I have a couple points here, because this is very close to this one. The Thrilling 30 has the same points on the side where you could store her weapons. She has uh, a very similar transformation to where this piece does become the front of the car. And if you look what they did here versus there, I almost wish they would have done this again, even though it's not the right uh, angle. It's a little push up, if you will, but it, it's at least a little better. So that's how these two look. Uh, either way, I like the idea that she has a lot of weaponry because RC was actually a badass and I, I've always enjoyed her character. I like the, uh, almost the contradiction between how she looks and her character. I, I've always enjoyed that. Well, here's how those two compare together. And here she is with Masterpiece Hot Rod. And they look pretty good together. They actually look pretty decent together. You could totally tell the generational gap between the hands and some of the engineering. Actually, a lot of the engineering. I want to show this for a little for a second, just because for all her faults, she actually could get pull off some really decent, really nice action posing here which is really cool. It's something that, you know, you could really do a lot with her posing. Um, oh, one thing I did for the articulation, I did forget that she has thigh swivels here. They almost can't see that. But she, you could get some really good poses with this. I mean, anything you can really imagine, she has a ton of posability. So it is something that, that she is an enjoyable figure to pose. Very, very enjoyable to pose and get some good action poses out of this one for sure which is something that a lot of the other ones don't have and it's something that is definitely a feature and actually they really wanted to showcase in this figure and of course i just wanted to get the the gang back together here in a group shot they just look way cool together just for a couple final thoughts on this one so masterpiece rc sort of a hard one to recommend it's not bad by any means the construction feels good. The transformation's not very fun. She comes with a lot of weapons, 
Metal feet, which is very good. Really, really poseable, which is very cool. Lots of fun to play with, but definitely took some step missteps on the aesthetics. However, looks good with the other masterpiece uh, movie bots. So the jury's still out whether I could actually recommend this. However, not too bad. Backpack does clean up fairly okay. Uh, kind of the best we've seen. And it's the right coloring. It's, it's hard to say. I wish the, she had more faces than the lips open or smiling. It's kind of weird. Uh, given that Arcee's sort of a badass character who is uh, definitely a war, a war veteran, even despite the pink color, I think they could have done a little bit more to honor this character. So if you like this video, hit that thumbs up button. Hit the thumbs down vote button if you have to. Subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. And ring the damn bell for notifications.